What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm counting down the top 10 best lifestyle running sneakers of 2018. First off, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Roadrunner Sports. Roadrunner Sports is an excellent athletic sports retailer that's pretty much my go-to when it comes to all my running sneaker needs. They have a crazy selection and super knowledgeable staff both online and in store. Not only that, but all the sneakers listed in today's video are available at roadrunnersports.com, so if you're interested in checking out any of the sneakers for yourself, I've left links to each sneaker in the description below. But moving on to the top 10 best lifestyle running sneakers of 2018, every single sneaker that I picked for this list is very versatile versatile and that it can be worn as a casual sneaker or as a running sneaker. Some of these shoes are better performance running sneakers than others and other ones are more comfortable lifestyle sneakers but I picked all of them to sort of be versatile and be able to do both. I've put this top 10 list in order of my personal favorites but they're all great sneakers and just because I have one at number one and one at number 10 doesn't mean that the number one is better than the number 10 or vice versa. If you are planning to pick up one of these sneakers pick one up because it works best for you and not because it's a certain number on the list. So without further ado let's jump right into the list. Number 10. The Nike Free Metcon. This shoe retails for $119 and is mainly marketed as a training sneaker. Of course you can run in it and obviously you can wear it as a lifestyle sneaker, but the reason it's marketed as a training shoe is because of its wide base. This wider base gives you more stability for when you're lifting or when you're making lateral movements. The shoe also has a TPU cage and flywire for a more dynamic fit, but the main benefit to this shoe is the Nike Free outsole. If you don't know what Nike Free is, basically it's hexagonal cutouts on the bottom of the outsole that allow for a lot more range of movement. That allows for a more natural or free feel on the bottom of the shoe. One thing I really like about this shoe is that the free technology is only used in the forefoot and in the heel, so the midfoot of the shoe still has a lot of really great support and stability. The materials used on the upper are super flexible and very comfortable, and overall it's a really great training, running, and lifestyle sneaker. Maybe not the most glamorous, but it's definitely an excellent gym shoe. Number 9. The Adidas Alpha Bounce Beyond. This $99 sneaker is definitely one of the more budget options on the list, and I've got to be honest, for $99 it's actually a really excellent shoe. I personally don't own a pair of Alpha Bounce Beyonds, but I do own a pair of Alpha Bounce Instincts, which are very similar. Both shoes feature a forged mesh upper, which provide a very comfortable one-to-one -one fit, especially after you've worn in the shoe. But by far, the best part of the Alpha Bounce line is the Bounce Midsole Cushioning. Bounce Cushion is extremely comfortable and soft without losing any responsiveness. It's by far one of my favorite budget cushions on the market. Not only that, but both shoes also feature a Continental Rubber outsole. And if you didn't already put it together, Continental Rubber is actually the same company that makes tires for the road. So through this partnership with Continental, Adidas has utilized one of the most durable rubbers in the game, which at the end of the day means your shoes will last longer which is a good thing. I actually also really like the look of the Alpha Bounce Beyond. I think it's a really clean, but still very interesting looking sneaker. If you're looking for an extremely comfortable, casual running sneaker on a budget, the Adidas Alpha Bounce Beyond is a great way to go. Number eight, the New Balance 574. This is another more budget-friendly option priced at $99, and obviously this is a more lifestyle sneaker than it is a running sneaker, but I've got to be honest, for $99 you're getting a pretty nice looking shoe. The upper is made up primarily of suede and mesh, and it's also got a sock-like ankle collar, which means it doesn't have a separate tongue. One thing I like about that is that it's very easy to get your foot into quickly, so if you're running to the store or you need to just throw on a pair of shoes really quickly, sometimes you don't even have to lace up the shoe. It's also got fresh foam cushioning, which to be fair isn't as soft as something like the Alpha Bounce, but it's definitely a comfortable ride overall. Out of all the options on the list, this is probably one of the easiest ones to actually dress up. Whether you want to wear it to work or to the gym or whatever the case may be, for 99 bucks, this is a good way to go. Number seven, the Nike Zoom Fly. This is another shoe that I don't personally own, but I have actually tried it on and worn it around. It's a $149 sneaker, so it's not exactly on the budget end of things. However, I do think you can find some pairs on sale. In fact, I think there's pairs on RoadrunnerSports.com on sale. So if you want to check those out, of course there's links to Roadrunner Sports in the description below. The Zoom Fly features a one piece engineered mesh upper with flywire technology. It's a very comfortable shoe both because of the midsole cushioning technology and the fit of the upper. And if you're into that more sporty look, I think it's one of the best looking sneakers on the list. Number six, the Adidas Pure Boost Go. This $119 continuation of the Adidas Pure Boost line features a full length Boost midsole. If you've ever tried Boost, you know how incredibly comfortable it is. It almost feels like you're walking on pillows, which is kind of crazy. Boost is an excellent lifestyle cushion and it does provide really great impact protection if that's something that you're looking for. However, shorter distance runners don't usually prefer Boost because it's just so soft and so mushy. It doesn't provide a lot of feedback. The Pure Boost Go features an extremely soft and comfortable circle knit upper. This shoe definitely features one of the more breathable and sock-like uppers on the list. 
It's also got this really interesting sort of crossed hatch TPU print on the toe and on the heel. That element is to provide support and durability. If you're looking for a really comfortable lifestyle shoe that doesn't break the bank and has insane cushioning, this is a great way to go. I'm not kidding, boost cushioning is incredible. Number five, the Adidas Solar Boost. The $159 Solar Boost is sort of the performance version of the Pure Boost Go. The Solar Boost features a tech fit upper with zoned elastic support in the forefoot. This shoe has one of the more snug fits on the list, and that's definitely a good thing if you're using this for performance. It allows you to have a true one-to-one -one fit, which is really great when you're running because you never feel unstable or like you're gonna slip in the shoe. This shoe also features a Boost midsole. However, this time it's not full length, so you don't actually have any in your toe. Not only that, but it's also a little bit thinner and has this foam rail running down the side, which keeps it from being too mushy. And the the thing I really love about that is that you still get a lot of the boost cushion feel while not losing any responsiveness. It's not as soft of a cushion as the Pure Boost Go, but most runners wouldn't actually want something that soft and would prefer something more like this. Another nice feature on this shoe is that it also has a continental rubber outsole. I've run in this shoe a couple times and it's definitely a very comfortable sneaker overall, but one thing to keep in mind if you're running in the summer, it might get very, very hot because it's not that breathable. Number four, Nike Vapor Max 2.0. This $189 follow-up to the wildly successful Nike Vapor Max features a fly it upper and a Vapor Max midsole cushion. Like with just about all the Nike shoes on the list, the Vapor Max features a fly wire lacing system. And if you aren't familiar with fly wire or what it is, it's basically these little wires or threads that run throughout the upper of the shoe. Part of the wire is exposed and loops around the laces, so when you tighten the laces, it pulls the wire closer together. And the reason that helps with fit is because the wires actually wrap all the way around the shoe, so when you tighten the laces, it pulls the entire upper towards your foot. Fly wire can give you a super snug one-to-one -one fit and when paired with Flyknit, it's a really excellent performance upper. The Vapor Max bubbles that form the midsole and the outsole of the sneaker, while in my personal opinion aren't the most attractive things in the world, do provide a very comfortable ride. Because they're separated, they allow for a lot of articulation in the forefoot, and then in the heel you've got this one large cushion which provides a lot of impact protection. And contrary to popular belief, these air bubbles do not pop easily. The Vapor Max 2.0 is the most expensive shoe on the list, but it does come in a lot of different colors and is extremely comfortable. In my personal opinion, it's not the best looking shoe on the list though. Number three, the Nike Pegasus 35. This $119 shoe is probably my favorite performance runner on the entire list. It features an engineered mesh upper and partial booty construction. When first trying on the shoe, it might feel a little bit tight, but as you start to wear the sneaker in, it does loosen up a little bit and create a really great one-to-one -one fit. In addition to the comfortable upper, you've also got a full-length zoom air unit in the midsole. That provides some great cushion without feeling too mushy and also gives you some nice responsiveness and feedback. It also has this beveled heel, which seems to be the new sort of theme and design direction that Nike running shoes are taking. I I don't know if it helps as much as they're saying. They say it helps a lot in transition and it does feel nice, don't get me wrong, but it's not like groundbreaking. With that being said though, this is definitely my go-to performance running sneaker on the list. Definitely not a bad looking casual sneaker either. Number two, the Adidas Ultra Boost 4.0 Parlay. For years, I've said that the Ultra Boost is my go-to lifestyle sneaker, and I'm gonna be honest, that still hasn't changed. This $179 sneaker is one of my favorite shoes of all time, both because I think it looks incredible and also because the Boost midsole is just so comfortable. This Parlay edition of the Ultra Boost is actually a special edition, and that's because Adidas teamed up with Parlay for the oceans. Parlay is an ocean conservation organization that specializes in clearing out plastics in the ocean. So what's really cool about this sneaker is that 95% of the upper is actually made up of recycled ocean plastic. Plastics. Adidas says that there's around 11 water bottles worth of plastic woven into the upper. And surprisingly, even though this prime knit upper has plastic in it, it's still extremely soft, breathable, and comfortable. Whether you're grabbing the Parlay version or the regular version, the Adidas Ultra Boost is one of my favorite sneakers of all time. Number one, the Nike Epic React. This $159 shoe is at the top of my list because I feel like it's the perfect mix between price, performance, and lifestyle wear. This one-piece upper provides a snug, breathable fit. It also comes in a lot of different colors, so you have tons of different flavors to choose from. Not only that, but this shoe also includes Nike's newest foam compound. That compound is utilized in the midsole and called Nike React. I love Nike React because it provides the perfect balance between comfort and cushion and responsiveness and bounce. It's an extremely comfortable midsole, but you never feel like you're sinking into the shoe, which you sometimes do with Boost. Yes, Yes, it's not as soft as Boost, so if you prefer impact protection over everything, maybe go with the Boost sneaker rather than React, but I think it provides the perfect amount of cushion and response for casual runners. Did I mention that I think the shoe looks good too? 
That pretty much wraps up the list for today. I'd love to know your thoughts on these shoes and which ones you like best, so make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. Once again, huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Roadrunner Sports. If you're looking to pick up any of the shoes on the list, there are links to Roadrunner Sports in the description below. Also, if you have any other athletic or sportswear needs, make sure to check out Roadrunner Sports. Once again, the links are in the description below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you on the next one.